Assalamu alaikum. This is lecture number 11 of the control systems course and I'm your instructor Nizwan Azam. So in the previous few lectures you have studied the mathematical modeling of uh, electrical networks and also the mechanical networks. In this lecture we will study how to model a system which is the hybrid of electrical and mechanical uh, components and we call this kind of systems electromechanical systems particularly we will deal with uh, in this lecture we will deal with a particular type of uh, electromechanical system which is a motor we know that a motor is an uh, electromechanical component that takes voltage as input and gives displacement as the output so in this lecture we will drive the transfer function for a simple armature controlled dc motor in the figure a we can see we have two portions of the motor first portion is the rotatory part which is on the left and the second portion is the stationary part which is on the right the stationary part is called The stationary part produces magnetic field and that can be produced by permanent magnets as well as electromagnets and this part is called the fixed field the second part is the rotating part and that is called the armature we have to find the transfer function g of s for this kind of motor where the input of this transfer function will be the applied voltage ea and the output will be the angular displacement theta m as shown in the figure b We will study the components and all the currents and voltages of the motor in more detail in the next slide. The basic working principle of a motor is that if we have some permanent magnets, if we have some magnetic field like this one, And we place a coil like this one and we apply a voltage at the ends of the coil then there will be a current which flows through the coil and we call this current the armature current in this case in the motor We call this current in and due to that current and due to the, that And due to that current which passes through due to the current due to the current which passes through the conductor and the magnetic field around it the conductor will feel some force and hence a torque 
which will rotate the coil which will rotate the wire and also in the case of dc motor the current through the armature is ia the armature current and the applied voltage r ea the armature armature the armature terminal voltage tm is the motor torque and due to this torque the motor rotates with the speed of theta m in radians per seconds now whenever a coil now whenever the wire rotates in the um, uh, in the magnetic fields so whenever a coil rotates in the magnetic field then according to the faraday's law there will be some back emf produced in the coil there will be some voltages produced in the coil which is called the back emf vb and apart from them um, we have ra the armature resistance and la the armature inductance to find the transfer function of the dc motor we will firstly find the expression for the back emf since the current carrying conductor is rotating in the magnetic field then its voltage will be proportional to the speed of the rotation hence uh, the b hence the back emf is directly proportional to Hence, the back EMF is equal to KB times theta m dot, where the KB is constant of proportionality, constant of proportionality, and this is also called the back EMF constant. Theta m dot. d theta by dt or theta m dot can also be called theta m dot or d theta m by dt can also be called the angular velocity omega m of t So if we take the Laplace transform of above equation, we will have this equation. If we apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the Laplace transformed armature circuit, so if we convert the previous armature circuit into its equivalent Laplace transform circuit and apply the KVL or the Kirchhoff's voltage law, then we will have this equation. 
then we will have this equation where EA is the applied voltage, EB is the peak M. Where RAIA is the voltage across the armature resistance, LASIA is the voltage across the conductor, or LA, VB is the back EMF voltage and EA is the applied voltage. The torque TM produced by the motor is directly proportional to the armature current IA. Hence, the relationship between torque and current can be written by this equation where the kt is motor torque constant and uh, the kt depends on the characteristics of a motor as specifically the magnetic field characteristics kt is the motor torque constant and usually it depends on the motor and magnetic field characteristics. So if we rearrange the above equation, we can write the uh, equation in the form of So if we rearrange the above equation, we can uh, write the equation in this form. And uh, if we put the expression of IA in the above equation, we get the following equation. Now if we see this equation, the objective was to find the transfer function between Ea and theta m. But we can see that we have another function which is tm as well. So we have to remove this tm and we have to write this tm in the uh, terms of theta m. To find the relationship between the torque and the angular displacement theta m, we will consider a typical equivalent mechanical load of a motor. And generally this load uh, consists of two parts. One is the inertia and the second one is the damper. Now this inertia is the combination of, uh, this is basically the equivalent inertia and it is the combination of our major inertia and uh, as well as the um, inertia at the load side. Similarly, the damper is also the combination of uh, the damper at the armature side and as well as the damper at the um, load side. So, if we write the Laplace, uh, so if we write the Laplace equation for uh, this system, we already have done in the uh, done. So if we write the Laplace transformed equation, so if we take the Laplace of this, um, So if we take the Laplace of this load and write this into an equation and write a mathematical equation, then the torque will be equal to Jms squared plus Dms So we can write this load into an equivalent. So if we convert this load into its equivalent um, Laplace domain 
and write it into an equation form, we can get this equation easily. And if we uh, substitute the relationship between tm and theta m in the previous equation, we will get this equation. Now we can see that this whole equation in is now we can see that this whole equation is in terms of ea and theta m. So from here we can easily find the relationship between ea and theta m, which will be the transfer function of the motor. Firstly, we will take theta m uh, common, and from there we can easily find the expression. And from here, and from there we can easily find the transfer function theta m divided by E a. In the case of DC motor, usually the armature resistance is much much larger than the armature inductance. R a is much much greater than L a. Hence, the terms with all L a. Hence, the terms with L a can be ignored to sim to simplify our calculations. So we can remove this term. And after taking the theta m from here and here common, we are. Uh, left with this equation and from here we can easily find the um, transfer function which is theta m divided by e a written here Now this transfer function looks uh, difficult, but if you see it closely, um, the basically we have some constants like kT, Ra, Jm, Kb, Dm, etc. Uh, there are some electrical constants which are kT, Jm. We have some electrical constants like kT and Kb, Ra, etc. And we have also some um, mechanical constants, which are Jm and Dm, etc. So, and we can find these constants. We can find these constants once we have uh, some information about the load and the motor characteristics. So let's suppose we have uh, the values of these constants the final form of this transfer function will be much simpler than uh, we have the form here. This will be just some constant divided by S into S plus another constant A. And if we look closely, the transfer function has mainly um, two zero. The transfer function ha has two poles. If we look at this transfer function closely, the motor transfer function has two poles, one at s equals to zero and the other at s equals to minus a. And there, there are no zeros for this transfer function. So once again, um, the k and the a are some constant values depending upon the motor coefficients or constants. Now in the in next few slides, we will see how to find these uh, coefficients. Firstly, in the next few slides, we will see how to find these motor constants. So let us firstly uh, discuss how to find the mechanical constants Jm and Dm. For that, we will uh, take a motor. For that, we will take a DC motor, which is driving a rotational mechanical load.
with the inertia JL and the damper DL. The motor itself has the uh, inertia as JA and the damper of the armature is DA. The inertia and the um, damper of the load can be reflected back to the armature of the motor so that they can be combined with the uh, armature's inertia and the damper and uh, which will be equivalent to the total um, inertia and the total damper JM and DM respectively. So if we include the gears, um, then we can reflect back JL through this term and DL through this term. And at the armature side, the JM will be the combination of armature's inertia and the inertia of the load, which is reflected back from the load to the armature. And similarly, the DM will be the combination of uh, the um, damper of the inner, the damper of the armature and the damper term, uh, which was reflected back from the load side. The electrical constants can be obtained by a dynamometer test, uh, in which we apply a constant voltage to the motor and the dynamometer measures the torque and speed of a motor. So as we have already considered LA to be zero, so put LA equals to zero into the original um, equation before putting the value of dm. So we will get this equation. To understand this equation in more detail, we have to uh, transform this uh, equation back to the time domain. So if we take the inverse Laplace of this equation, we will get it, its equivalent time domain expression written here. When the motor is being driven at a fixed voltage, then we will have a constant torque dm and a constant speed of the motor omega m. That's why we have removed the dependency of the time with these two variables. And by the way, this omega m is nothing but the time derivative of the angular displacement theta m. From here, um, if we solve for dm, we will get this expression for the torque. If we look at this equation closely, this equation this is an equation of a line. If you remember y equals to mx plus c form, then this is the m the slope of this line and this is c the intercept or the y-axis intercept of this line for different values of ea we will have different lines and we can plot them together to find
We can plot them together to find, we can draw them together on a plot called the torque speed curve. On this particular torque speed curve, we have drawn two um, different lines for the two values of applied voltage EA1 and EA2. Similarly, we can have um, more of these lines on this curve. And we can see from here that the vertical axis is the torque axis and the horizontal axis is the speed axis. And this torque versus uh, speed curve is called So if we want if we want to find the y axis intercept this point or this point this will be when omega m equals to 0 at this point omega m equals to 0 so if we put omega m equals to 0 in above equation i will remove these writings from here so if we put omega m equals to zero in above equation this term will be removed and we will be left with uh, just kt divided by ra into ea on the right side and on the left side this tm is called the t stall or the stall torque So once again, when omega m equals to zero is put in this equation, we will have the equation for the T stall. And also, when the torque is zero, the point where the line touches the horizontal axis is called the no load speed, is called the no load speed of the motor. So if we put torque Tm equals to zero in this equation, this Tm will be this Tm will be removed, and we will have. So if we put Tm equals to zero in this equation, this Tm will be cancelled out, and we will be left with uh, Kb Kt divided by Ra equals to Kt divided by Ra into Ea. From here, we can see that Kt by Ra will be cancelled out. And what we are left with So if we put Tm equals to zero in this equation, Tm will be cancelled out and we will be left with minus Kb Kt divided by Ra into omega m. And we can, um, and 
and this omega m is by the way now omega no load we can replace it by omega no load notation and this will be equal to uh, kt pi r a into e a i have no space so i am writing here e a now kt by r a will be cancelled out on the both sides and we are left with what and by the way there is no negative sign this is now on the other side so this is positive now we will be left with k b into omega no load equals to e a and uh, from here we can find the expression for omega no load written here so now these are two equations for t style and uh, no load speed from these two expressions we can find the electrical constants of our interest which were uh, kt by ra and we can find kt by ra from the first equation and the final expression for kt by ra is written here and from the second equation we can find the um, expression for kb and the expression from for kb is written here so now we know how to find the the mechanical components uh, sorry the mechanical uh, constants as well as the electrical constants for the motor transfer function let's perform an example where we have to find the motor transfer function theta l by e a and we are given with the following schematic and the torque speed curve so if we look the schematic closely r a is the armature resistance and here we have taken l a equals to zero we are given with the armature inertia and the armature uh, viscous damper we know the gear ratio and also we have the um, load inertia and load viscous damper um, available in the figure b we have a torque speed curve we have t stall we have the omega no load and we are given with the value of the voltage uh, on which the motor is operating so from the left so from the so from the schematic on the left side we can find the mechanical components and from the uh, torque speed curve on the right side we can find the electrical constants We have already seen that uh, the JM equals to JA plus JL into N1 divided by N2 whole square. So we will just put the values of JA, JL, N1 and N2 here. And similarly, we can also find the dm, which is dA plus dL n1 divided by n2 whole square. So by putting the values, we have found jm to be 12 and dm to be 10. Now to find the electrical constants, we will take um, help from the torque speed curve.
if you remember from the previous discussion um, the kt divided by ra was equal to t stall divided by ea so we already know t stall which is 500 and we know ea equals to 100 hence the kt divided by ra will be equal to just 5. similarly we can find the kb uh, from the equation kb from the expression kb equals to ea divided by omega no load and we know that ea is 100 and omega no load is 50 so the kb will be just 2. so now we have the mechanical constants here and the electrical constants written here we can plug these constants in this equation so let's plug these uh, constant in this equation in the next slide so let me write down the uh, found constants again gm was found to be 12 and dm was found to be 10 kt divided by ra was found to be 5 and kb was found to be 2. so let's put these um, constants in this expression we will have theta m divided by ea that will be equal to kt by ra is 5 so 5 times jm is 12 so so kt by ra is 5 times 1 by jm and jm is 12 so 5 divided by jm divided by s s plus 1 divided by jm is 12 and dm is 10 plus kt by ra is 5 times kb is 2 so 10 so uh, we can write Uh, we can replace this jm by just 12. so this is the final so after some uh, manipulations the final transfer function theta m of s divided by ea s will be 0 0.417 divided by s into s plus 1.667 so we have found the theta m divided by ea but uh, if you read the statement of the question um, closely we were actually asked to find theta l divided by ea now the question will be how do we find theta l divided by ea we don't know the expression for theta l divided by ea but actually there is a relationship between theta l and theta m we know that uh, theta l and theta m are um, directly related through the turns ratio and theta l sorry theta l divided by theta m is actually equal to n1 divided by n2 so from here we can uh, find the relationship between theta l which is 100 and n1 is 100 and 2 is 1000 multiplied by theta m so this will be uh, 1 by 10 theta m or theta m by 1 by 10 theta m
And hence, if we apply, uh, and hence, if we multiply the right side by one by 10, this transfer function can be converted to theta So if we multiply um, one by 10 on both sides, we can have the transfer function theta L divided by theta A, which was the required transfer function. So in summary, when you have to find the transfer function for a DC motor, you will obviously use this expression, but to find the constants, you will um, the but to find the desired constants, but to find the electrical and mechanical uh, constants, we will use the dynamometer test and as well as But to find the electrical constants, we will use the dynamometer test. And for the mechanical constants, we will um, In summary, when we have to find the uh, transfer function for a DC motor, we can use this expression. This expression. And the electrical and mechanical uh, constants being used in this expression can be found in the similar fashion we have used in this example. So this concludes our discussion of the electrical electro so this concludes our discussion on the electro mechanical so this concludes our discussion on the electro mechanical system modeling so this concludes our discussion on the modeling of electro mechanical systems